2024 is a presidential election year, and while that race may be the highest profile contest next year, it's not the only one that will have a critical impact on the lives of everyday Americans. 34 Senate seats and maybe even control of the chamber will be decided next fall, along with every seat in the House of Representatives. Not to mention, voters in 11 states will also be choosing their governors. So here on Simone, we are unpacking some of these key races with our series on the ballot. And today, we're focusing on Arizona's first congressional district. In last year's midterms, Republican incumbent David Schwakert won the seat by less than 1%. Now, there are many Democratic candidates, including Wall Street veteran Connor O'Callaghan, who are hoping to unseat Schwakert and help Democrats take back the House. But in one of the most competitive districts, in one of the most competitive states, is O'Callaghan the best Democratic candidate to lead the party to victory? Well, let's ask him. Connor O'Callaghan joins me now. Welcome to you, sir. So, look, you are facing a crowded primary field. Um, it even includes a, a state representative. And it was only in recent years that you moved back to your district. You are working from home in Scottsdale, Arizona. So why are you the Democrat who can best flip this seat? Well, Simone, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. I hope you're having a great Labor Day weekend. And I think it's a great question. So this race is deeply personal to me. I was born in Ireland, and I moved to America as a baby and moved right here to what is now CD1 when I was just four years old. So when I started kindergarten here in the district, I still had an Irish accent. And that was gone by the time I was in first grade. But I continued through the public school system here in Scottsdale, Arizona, right through high school, graduated from Chaparral High School here in Scottsdale. And then in 2020, as you mentioned, my wife and I moved back here to Scottsdale with our three young boys who also all now attend public school. And so growing up here in the district, going to public schools, the community that I was surrounded with, my church, my coaches, what I had here growing up really allowed my parents and me to seek the American dream and to achieve the American dream. And when I look at my kids and I look at their friends, I feel like that American dream is in jeopardy for so many now. And that's why it's so important for us to beat David Schweikert and, and reclaim that dream for our kids. You have said that it's been a mistake to run what you call boilerplate liberals in um, Arizona's first congressional district. First of all, what is a boilerplate liberal and how do you differ from these so-called boilerplate liberals? Sure. So our district is lean 2.6% Republicans. So the math just doesn't work to flip this seat unless you're able to bring over independents and moderate Republicans. And that's something that we've come close to doing in the past, but haven't quite been able to do. And I think there are a few reasons for that. In past cycles, the past two specifically, we've run candidates that did not live in the district. And this district is pretty unique. It has a pretty unique electorate. So I think you need somebody who grew up here, lives here now, and really understands what makes the district tick. I think for a lot of people here, that's the economy. So people here, for better or worse, tend to vote with their pocketbooks, whether they're Democrats, independents, or Republicans. And so messaging on the economy and not saying things like, we need to tax the 1% more, you know, those are sort of messages that will resonate better with voters here and something that I think we've missed in the past, because frankly, the candidates we've run haven't had their finger on the pulse as they did not live here in the district. So, um, Mr. Callahan, some folks would say, um, well, they're maybe a little skeptical of uh, your pitch because of your time on Wall Street, because you are, um, th that is the work you currently do. And maybe they're wondering, maybe, do you believe in um, the richest people in this country paying their fair share? How would you respond to those claims and those assertions? Listen, I absolutely believe in the richest uh, in, in this country paying their fair share. So again, my family came to America with very little. You know, my dad's first job here paid $19,000 a year. The house we left in Ireland was $28,000 with a 15% mortgage. So we didn't come here with nothing, but we didn't come here with much. And so I've achieved everything that I've been able to do here because of this district. And of course, I believe that wealthy people should pay their fair share. That's why I'm a Democrat. And that's why I believe that we have a responsibility, not just as Democrats, but as Americans, to help lift people up and help each generation be better than the next and to help the next generation of kids achieve that American dream that I was so fortunate to be able to achieve. With respect to my Wall Street background, you know, Wall Street's become a convenient boogeyman over the years. Um, you know, it's a, it's a quick, convenient media soundbite. But I think voters here in CD1 are more savvy than that. I think they realize that having somebody with deep financial expertise who understands businesses, understands governments, understands economies, understands how it all works and how it all fits together and how those decisions impact people in their everyday lives, I think that's a hindrance to my candidacy. Uh, not a hindrance to my community. I think people will actually view that as a benefit.
All right, Connor O'Callaghan, a Democrat running for Congress in Arizona's first congressional district competitive race. The country is watching. Thank you very much, sir.